Hello everybody and welcome to the next part of the Victoria 2 Let's Learn. I have to apologise for not making a video in about two weeks, but uh, we're going to hop in right now and I'm going to do a fairly short video on colonisation. So colonisation is taking over these parts of the globe which haven't been, you know, there's no one living there at the moment. There, for example, there are some people in Russia, there are quite a few normally around this area, they're everywhere. But the biggest one is Africa. Because Africa has a ton of uh, just uncolonized area that you can all get to. Right now you can see North German Africa is actually massive. And I'm trying to look for places that aren't colonized. So there's a big blotch here that isn't colonized. And a big blotch here that isn't colonized. And this is I'm playing a different save game. one Just one that I've been playing, you know, usually. And there's a bit of on it. But I think I'm going to go for Russia now. Because Russia can easily colonize these areas and it doesn't have competition. Whereas in somewhere like here, North Germany for this uh, for this land is um, competing with the Dutch and the British. And down here, you know, there's all these. So I'm probably going to do a little bit with Russia to show you the basis of colonization. And then I'm going to move on to one of these countries and show you what it's like when you have more than one country trying to colonize each other. Well, colonize... The same place. So let's jump in as Russia, currently 7th great power. Any secondary power can colonize, so top 16 countries, or it might be, you know, top 18, something like that. Uh, Russia, okay. Right. Now, basics is colonization. So to colonize any area that you can see here we don't have or we'd like, requires you to, well every colony or place on the map has a life rating. You can see here, this um, sort of province, uh, what's the province view? Okay, we'll just use this. You can kind of see it outlined here. Its life rating is 15, which means basically the higher the life rating, the easier it is to live there. And until you have um, until your country can colonize that particular life rating, you can't take it over. So you can see right now, uh, we have 20 life rating, and to get that we need 15. Now, how do you improve life rating, you may ask? Now, all colonies in Africa, which is your main colonization hotspot, will have 15 life rating. So the race for Africa begins when everyone has this 15 life rating. And the old, you normally get it around the same time. And the way you get it is through research. Let me see. Okay, so uh, Russia's not in a good place, but we'll not worry about that right now. Technology. There are three things that go towards improving your life rating. Only three. Nothing else matters. The first one is in industry. That's my phone, if you can hear that. The first one in industry is medicine. Now, in medicine, we've talked about before that our inventions, we have a random, uh, random chance to happen each month. The inventions that we need is prophylaxis against malaria. You can see there, minimum life rating, minus 5%. So it goes down by 5. And this just has a random chance each month to activate. But the thing with inventions is, when one country has researched it, essentially, and um, found it, all the other countries gain a massive boost to uh, finding it as well. So the country that gets it first has maybe like, you know, three month head start and then other uh, countries will start getting it as well. So this is the first thing you need is prophylaxis against malaria, which is in medicine. So you can see there the activation year is 1836. The next thing we need is state and government. Inside state and government, there is an invention called Mission to Civilize, which makes you go down by 10%. And the last one, which is an army, is breech loaded rifles. There is one called Colonial Negotiations, which makes you go down by 10%, and you can see there the things that you need. So first off, we're just going to research breech loaded rifles, and I'm going to do a little bit to improve the economy while we play as Russia, so I'll be back in just a second. Alright, so I messed around with the economy of Russia a little bit to get it in the positive. We've researched breech, uh, breech, loaded, breech loaded rifles, and you can see now... We have a 20% chance to invent colonial negotiations each month. And you can see there, we have at the bottom a plus 10% for uh, any other great power having colonial negotiations. And another 10% for neighbouring countries having colonial negotiations. So we should pick it up fairly quickly. 
So I'm just going to pause here and come back when we actually do have it. Alright, so that took about two months. Uh, I wasn't counting. But now we have colonial negotiations, minimum life rating down by 10%. So now we can start having a go at these areas. Now what I want right now is uh, this chunk of America. Oh, so we can finally get Alaska. So you can see there we click, uh, let me just withdraw that actually. So you can see that again. The cost of investment is 80 colonial power. And you can see up here, this is our colonial power. This is, you know, uh, you get extra from improved technology. And the more colonies you own, the less of this you have. Especially your power to colonize nations. So when you already have a colony, some of that is taken away to maintain the colony you already have. So this is also based on the size of your country and things like that. We see now 80 uh, colonial power. We have more than enough. So we click send expedition. Now you can see there, if nobody competes with your expedition, by that date, you can skip directly to creating a protectorate. So all we have to do now is wait for that date to tick over. I, uh, uh, this is crisis. We'll not worry about that right now. Okay. So now you can see that the UK also wants to colonize the area I'm colonizing. Now what we'll do is, after um, that date is reached, we will have to make an investment which means it will cost us more colonial power to um, add to the colony again. And it basically becomes a race to see who has the most colonial power that they're willing to put in. So say if we put in, say if the UK has 1,000, we have 1,300. If we put in, uh, if we keep upgrading and upgrading to the point where we're spending 1,200, the UK can't compete with that number because it doesn't have 1,200. So eventually it will have to withdraw its colony and we'll get it. So... That this is what's um, this is a we know a competing colony. Now, if we do one over here, where we're not going to be competed with, that's an extra eighty. And we're going to let that tick. We'll actually just set a couple more up. I don't want to spend too much, but we'll just leave it at that. Have a quick look at the map. Nitroglycerin. All right. Okay. Now, because our colony is ready to be upgraded or expanded, this little icon will appear. We can invest in our colony in Alaska. So let's go to the Alaska we're trying to colonize. You can see there, it will cost an extra 20 to move up the ladder. Now, if the UK chose not to improve this after that date, then it would be ours. So it's a, it's a constant game of you're both improving and improving and improving. So you see the UK there, they've upgraded to the next level. We'll upgrade to the next level, the UK will upgrade to the next level, and it'll be back and forth, back and forth, until one of us decides to uh, stop. Uh, I'm actually just going to... Oh, there we go. Next, uh, next level there. There's a lot of things popping up for me right now. I think we're even in a war. We are with Afghanistan. Uh, yes. Now... Oh, God. Okay. Nope, that's not it. I'm just going to wait and wait and wait. Everyone wants to go through Russia. Okay. Uh, so we're almost at that day now. 22nd of January. There we go. Right. Alaska, ready to upgrade again. We send more and more. And you can see that this little red bar is slowly filling up. Now, because we are both competing over the colony, it creates tension between our two countries over this colony. If that tension gets high enough, it will create a crisis, which we'll talk about in another video. But basically all you need to know is if this goes too high and you're still fighting over it, it could turn into a world war over this colony. And you don't want that to happen. So it is best to avoid crises unless you have a fairly good idea you're going to you know, get away with something like that. But we're Russia, we're pretty big, and we have a lot more colonial power than them. So I think they should... Oh, they have a little bit extra now. It's an equal game. So we'll see where it goes. Ready to agree one here. Now, because no one else has interfered with it, after that date has been reached, we can create a protectorate. Now, a protectorate is like, you know, a normal state, like any of these, except it's not a fully fledged state, it's still new. And to upgrade it to a colony, which you can see there, it just costs a small amount of colonial power. So right now, 
if I go to the colonial map, hold on. Hmm, I'm not sure what that is. They should come up differently, but it's not, but okay. So you can see right there, these are colonial provinces. Now if we upgrade them, they are now colonies. Now, this is step two. There's a three step process. So step one, you're a um, protectorate. Step two, you're a colony owned by the country. And step three, you become part of that country. So right now, it, for example, let's look at a good example. Something like Jamaica, right? Currently British. So Jamaica starts off as a British protectorate. That is very important. Then it becomes a colony of Britain. And then eventually it becomes part of the United Kingdom. So it is interchangeable with the country. And that makes it, you know, it gets all the benefits that the country would get. So how would you upgrade from a colonial province to an actual state of the country? And for that, you can see right there, I should have really turned my phone off. At least 1% of the population need to be bureaucrats. So you can see right there, our, um, if I mouse over this, current ratio is 0.00%. So we need 1% of people in this state to be bureaucrats of our uh, culture, so Russians. And to do that, we could... Uh, do attract immigrants and that would mean that anyone in Russia that wants to migrate to a colony has a higher chance to go here which would fill up that bu bu bureaucracy number so that is the way you do that it is harder in places you know that are far away to get that and it can take you know up to 20 years normally to incorporate a country but that is the basis of how it happens now that we've got through that we're going to focus protectorate colonial province Colonial province. Now we've done that. I'm actually just gonna, you know, this would this would be what you would do as Russia, as someone attacking Africa, trying to get Africa. This would be a very different process. You would, you know, pick a place where no one else was going to be and then attack from there. But another very important thing is you can only colonize places that are within your naval reach. So, for example, let's find an uncolonized place. Uh, there we go, Easter Island. Now we can't send an expedition because our closest naval base is 446 units away and it needs to be 150 at most. So if I wanted the Easter Island, say if it was going to be a very important part, a strategy I would incorporate was maybe take a piece of chili, right? Then create a naval base here and then, you know, I can get from there to there in much less than I can get from here down there. So that is also, you know, the main way you would get places like Africa is you would start by, you know, taking Morocco and then moving your way down or taking Tunisia or taking Egypt or taking parts of Ethiopia, which is currently Japanese and things like that. But let's go back to our, where are we? Other side. Oh, no, we can go this way. Uh, can we invest in Alaska? Not yet. Another point of colonization is that every time, I think I've, I've spoken about this before in brief, but every time you have a colony or protectorate, it costs a little bit of colonial power to maintain it. You can see right there, we have 1,275 colonial power. 120 of that is in colonies we are trying to create, such as Alaska. And 90 of that is tied up in maintenance, which means it is a colony. And, you know, we have to maintain it, so we have to spend that to maintain it. A way to get back some of that is to release uh, areas. So you can see right now, the colonies will always have this red number. So, let's see. The Commonwealth of Alaska, or, and the Confederation of Alaska. So the Commonwealth of Alaska is three provinces. Each one takes five colonial power to maintain. If I release this as a satellite... Or Dominion if it's a colony as we talked about before I would get that colonial power back and Alaska will become its own country that is owned by us so that is another way you can get rid of the power tied up now let's do this and this just about wraps it up for colonization this battle between me and England is gonna just keep going on and going on and going on probably until crisis by the looks of it or until one of us is forced to pull out but yeah, so 
say if I knew I wasn't going to win this, what I could do was, what I, do, what I could do is, sorry, I could release some, um, what's the word? I could release some other colonies to get back some uh, colonial power and then put it into here again. So I could, you know, get rid of some stuff and then focus on here. So it's all a game of just picking where you want to put your points. And that's really all colonization is. So I hope this uh, video tutorial has been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments bo uh, comment box below. I have a full series on Victoria 2 and how to's and how to play stuff. So if you want to check any of those out, this will be in a playlist, so you should be able to find them in the related videos. Apart from that, thank you for watching, and see you next time.